Hello everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Lena and today is my first ever reading vlog. Um, I am back home from college and I have been doing a lot of reading. I am currently reading The Name of the Wind, not... No, I'm reading The Wise Man's Fear by Patrick Rothfuss, which is the sequel to The Name of the Wind. Um, and then I am on page 881, so I have a little over 200 pages left before I'm done with this book. Um, and I'm really enjoying it so far. And then I will be picking up another book, which I kind of have to decide what I'm feeling. These are the three books that I'm trying to decide between Transcendent Kingdom by Ya Jesse, Memorial by Brian Washington, and The New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander. As you can tell, these two books are actually from Book of the Month. This is November, this is September. Um, I gifted this to my sister in September, so I actually haven't had a chance to even look at it because I sent it back home while I was at college. I know I'm going to start this book no matter what because since it's nonfiction, when I read nonfiction, I typically read other books as well and just read this at a slower pace. So that just really talks about racial injustice in this country and um, the history of mass incarceration. I mean, you can kind of tell by the title what it is about. It is such an important book and I'm kind of embarrassed that I haven't read it yet, but I will be getting to that. Um, at least starting it within the next day or so. And then between Memorial and Transcendent Kingdom, this is the companion or like the follow-up to Homegoing by the same author and I read that book. I've heard that they are completely different. And then this book is also a contemporary and it is all about like love and family and discovering what love is all about, which sounds really beautiful to me. So I'm gonna have to decide between those, but in the meantime, I'm going to finish Wise Man's Fear and let you know my thoughts on that. Today we have joining me Juniper, and then we also have Mr. Clementine, who is taking a nap under the tree, but also hates the camera. For those of you who have no idea what the King Killer Chronicles are even about, this is the second book. It's supposed to be a trilogy, I believe, maybe, but the third book hasn't come out. Um, I've been reading this for what feels like a million years. Really, I just started like on the last day of October or something like that. Um, but it follows the story of Quoth, our main character, who um, a chronicler shows up at his inn and wants to know his story and basically it sounds a little trite but he starts to tell the story and the bulk of each novel is the actual story of Quoth's life but then it flashes into the present with the chronicler actually documenting the story and there's other things going on so there's multiple layers to the story definitely. This is a classic fantasy series. Um, if you haven't heard of it, I'm honestly surprised, but I definitely recommend it. Um, I am, as I said, almost all the way through and really enjoying it. The only thing that's making me a little hesitant at the moment is it seems to be like the male gaze and like the objectification of woman seems to be coming on a little stronger within the last few hundred pages or so. And I'm not quite sure if I'm just overthinking it, but that's what's bothering me a little bit. And in other good news, it is snowing today, which I am so happy about. Um, and I love reading when it's snowing outside. So without further ado, I'm going to start reading this morning. So I read about a hundred pages or so and then I took a break for lunch. I have less than a hundred pages to read before I finish the book. Um, so I'm really excited about that. I'm going to sit down and do that. It's almost one o'clock now. Hopefully I'll finish that within the next hour or so. And for anyone wondering, the cats are still here having their nap time. I am back. 
back and I have finally finished Wise Man's Fear, which has been a long time coming. Um, I haven't quite decided what my final thoughts are and what my rating will be, but it's not going to be five out of five, I don't think, because I did have some issues with the book, which I will start to process and think about and then share my final thoughts at the end of this video but I'm really glad I read it. I enjoyed many aspects of the book. I don't regret reading it at all. I just have some issues, which I kind of alluded to, but those issues morphed into something more specific um, as the novel continued. So I will continue, I will think about that. And I also like to read other people's reviews and see if I'm the only one that picked up on that. Um, but I think I'm going to put this book down and just think about it for a while. I'm so, so glad I finished it. But in the meantime, speaking of series that have continued, um, I will be picking up Transcendent Kingdom by Ya Jesse. I finally decided that this is the next book I will be reading. I love the cover. I think it's beautiful, especially with the gold. I don't have many covers that look like this. Um, for those of you who don't know, it is the next book that follows Homegoing by Ya Jesse as well. And it follows the story of Gifty, who is a PhD candidate at Stanford University. She's working on like some biology, medical kind of thing. Um, and she's also struggling a lot in her life because her mother and brother both have some pretty severe issues. Um, and it talks about being an immigrant and the problems that can come along with that as well as just life in general. And it's supposed to be a really moving book. I've heard really emotional, really powerful. Um, and I'm also interested to see the relationship that religion and science have within this book because it also mentions that um, on like the little synopsis thing. And I'm really just excited to see what this book is. I don't really know that much more about it other than the fact that I'm excited to read it. My expectations may be a little too high. I hope that's not the case, but we shall see. Oh, I'm going to go change to work out and then I will catch up with you all later. I do have a meeting tonight um, for some school related stuff. Even though I'm out of school, I still have school stuff. Um, so I have that. So I don't know how much time I'll have between working out and then that meeting, um, but hopefully I can get a good chunk into this book. This book is 260 something pages so I should be able to get um, some reading in. Oh hello everyone it is now dark outside and it has stopped snowing. Um, I've moved upstairs to a different room as you can tell because downstairs NPR is playing and I can't even compete with that noise. Um, so right now I made myself some homemade t bread toast whatever um, and I filled up my water cup and I have my book somewhere. Did I really leave it over there? Oh no, it's right here. I have my book right here. Um, I have a little over an hour until my meeting starts and I do have to do some prep work for that meeting, unfortunately. But I think I'm going to be able to get a start on reading and I will let you know what my initial thoughts are once I get a little bit into the book and then I'll have my meeting. Um, and probably soon after that I'll have supper. And then after that, we'll see what's happening with my family and what the deal is. We didn't get as much snow as I wanted. It's only about like probably four inches or so, but I'm still glad we have it. So I'm going to get to reading and I will check in with you later. Good morning, everyone. And it is day two of my reading vlog. I am currently reading Transcendent Kingdom. Um, Clementine is also joining me here. I am on page 162 and I am loving this book. Um, I'm also an idiot. When I read the inside cover it said it was a stunning follow-up that literally means it's the next book that Ya Jesse wrote, not that it's related in the slightest to Homegoing. So I was confused for a long time but now I'm not confused. <laughs> um, and once I got over that confusion I have fallen in love with this book. It is so so good. It is living up to my expectations and honestly exceeding them at this point. I'm really finding the whole play between um, Gifty, the main character's um, ideas on religion and her childhood and upbringing versus um, her candidacy for her PhD. It's really interesting. The experiments with the mice is a little disturbing for me, but I'm getting over that. The book 
does talk about a lot of difficult things and it's hard to read at some points, but it is so beautiful um, and well written, which I'm really enjoying. It's so different from Homegoing. Like everyone who said that is completely right. I have like a hundred-ish pages left before I finish this book. So my goal is to finish this book this morning um, and then I will see what my next book to pick up is. What do you see, bud? Is that yourself? Um, yeah, so. because NPR is back on again and it's way too loud downstairs. But the better news is that I finished Transcendent Kingdom and I'm so glad I read it. Um, so this will be my wrap up final clip to give you my final thoughts on both books I read. Um, I calculated pages and I believe I read 491 pages between yesterday and today. It's around noon right now. Um, so I've read for a little over 24 hours, um, but obviously like I didn't read the whole time. So we'll start with the first book that I read, which was The Wise Man's Fear by Patrick Rothfuss. I officially put my Goodreads review on, so you can check me out on Goodreads, which is goodreads.com backslash or slash Cinderella at midnight, all one word. Finished this book, gave it four out of five stars. I really, really liked many of the aspects that were in the first book. I think the world is amazing and completely immersive. I really like Quoth as a main character, even though he's not really a great person. I still really find him fascinating and interesting to read from his perspective. I found some of the new cultures that we were introduced to in this book really fascinating to read about. I also think even though this book is really big, it was really well paced. There weren't really many moments that it was dragging along or I felt like we needed to speed things up, which I think is really admirable. Of course, the problem is, is that there's no third book, but I mean, I've said that a million times. I probably shouldn't say it again. It's odd to think that this is my last time with Quoth for quite some time because I read the first book at the beginning of the summer and then I bought this book in the fall so I could read it because I thought the third book was coming out this fall, but that's just not the case anymore. I have no idea what's happening. The reason why I gave it four out of five stars and not five out of five like I gave um, the name of the wind because while this is like real fantasy like this is such high quality the writing is beautiful the world is beautiful like all of that stuff is great and on par with what I want it to be and what I need it to be the whole like this is a little bit of a spoiler but quote at, at one point in the book um, goes off with the Florian Florian who is this fae who um, kills men by having sex with them and then after that point, the book just became like this sex crazed uh, Quoth character who's obsessed with sex and he needed sex and he was always looking at women for sex and I found that a little disturbing. It was addressed a little bit towards the end of the book, but I was just like, is this necessary? Like that's when I started to question Quoth as a character and or Patrick Rothfuss's choices. The reason why I still gave it four out of five is because the writing in this is amazing and I really really love how no matter when I picked this up because I read it over quite some time I went right back into the world I was fully immersed I was really into it and I loved that so I definitely recommend this book definitely recommend this series hopefully I will be able to pick up the third book sometime within my lifetime and now we get on to Transcendent Kingdom by Ya Jesse yes this book five out of five stars Love, love, love it. I, as I mentioned, was a little confused, thought it had something to do with homegoing. The only thing it has to do with homegoing is it's the same author, so it's dumb on my part, I know. Gifty was an amazing main character, an amazing um, character to follow along with. I found her to be so relatable, and it could have been intentional where where people feel like they can relate to her, but like I really felt like I saw myself in her, which kind of was freaky at some times. There were so many lines and passages that I had to stop and be like, this is literally me, and it was kind of shocking. Um, 
An example of that is she's talking about her mother and that she's always trying to reteach herself and relearn that not everyone is the same as her. And this is something I always struggle with is I literally think everyone is the same as me and everyone has the same mindset and the same thoughts and the same actions as I would have, which is obviously not the case. And I know this is something that sounds dumb, but like that's something that I struggle with and it was so like endearing and special to hear that Gifty also struggles with it. I found the whole religious aspect, which is what kind of interested me with this book, to be really powerful and amazing. It explored the dangers of Christianity specifically within this country and the harms it can cause. However, it also showed the comforting and not so negative parts of Christianity, which I also found refreshing. Nothing is simple and nothing is just so cut and dry as Christianity is bad or Christianity is good. Religion is bad, religion is good. It just, life just doesn't work this way. This book was really a book about life and I just loved that so, so much. I found the relationships in this book either, even if they were heartbreaking, like they were in my heart and I was so, so invested in this book and the characters and I cared about every single one of them. Yaw Jesse's writing is amazing. This is nothing like Homegoing. Um, like, I honestly wouldn't even guess they were the same author, but this book, so, so, so powerful. Five out of five stars. You need to read this. Definitely, like, best book I've read in a long time. And I want to say, like, maybe one of my favorite books of 2020. We'll have to see. I also enjoyed that the ending... Um, was not perfect, but it did have closure, which I was very impressed with because some books, um, specifically like The Vanishing Half, I was really invested in, and then the ending kind of like dropped down on me, but the ending did not drop out on me for this one. The only complaint I have, which is like a very, very minor complaint, and it's a me issue, is like, I'm sick of the whole woman in STEM thing, and this sounds really awful to say, but it just feels like if you choose any career that's outside of STEM, it's worthless and not really a productive use of your time. That kind of seemed to be perpetuated in this book, um, but it's I'm just extra sensitive to that because obviously I'm an English and French major, so not STEM. Um, and it's constantly like, if you're not STEM, then what are you doing with your life? So that was my only slight issue with this book, but overall, like five out of five stars. I've said that a million times now, but I am so impressed. Like, yeah, Jesse, you are killing it right now. You don't need me to say that, but I loved this book. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you wanna see more reading vlogs or more book-related videos, just let me know down in the comments below. Let me know what you're currently reading down in the comments below, and I will see you all next week.